I played rugby for 16 years uh, for a, a couple of different clubs. There we go, for Saracens, for England, and for the Newcastle Falcons. I played for 16 years. I played with some of the best players, been coached by some of the best coaches. When I retired, I played 245 premiership, premiership games at the time. That was the most premiership games of all time. Unfortunately, two little buggers have got in front of me, so I'm third on the all-time list. We've won a couple of trophies. But it was really my time at Saracens that um, that got me thinking, what could I talk about that was going to interest such bright young people like yourselves? So Saracens Rugby Club is 130 years old. Rugby's only been professional for 20 years. It went through a severe cultural change five years ago, a cultural change that I'd like to share with you. We always had talented players, but the difference between the old Saracens, we were very, very results driven. Everything was, are we going to win this game? We're going to win the Premiership. We go out on a pre-season camp, and we go, what are our team goals? Our team goals are to win the Premiership, win all our home games, win half our away games, get bonus points here, there. You come to the first game of the season, it's at home, you lose, your sort of whole, you know, your whole structure goes out the window. Everyone starts to panic. But you know, it was a good club. It was a fun club to be involved with, but we are mediocre. We we're always mid-table. We got to the odd semi-final, we never won anything. The directors, they put a lot of money into the club, the individuals were probably more concerned about how much money they could take out of the club. So anyway, Black Monday, March 2009. Is that, is that sort of similar to the financial 2009? That was pretty, <laughs> see it happened in sport as well. So the agents of change, Dr. Brendan Venter, Mr. Griffiths, as we called them, Jacqueline Hyde. Um, so they came, came into the club, very acrimonious time in the club. Eddie Jones was one of the greatest coaches in the world. He had just left Saracens, you know, and he pretty much tried to bring the club down with him at the same time. These two guys got involved in 2009 March. They called every single player into a room. We had a 10 minute chat with them. The first guy went in, Chris Jack, 70 clap, all black. Our marquee player had two years on his contract. Very, very good player and a good guy as well. He came out of the meeting and said, they don't want me here next year. Next player goes in, Census Johnson. Samoan International, doing fantastically well now at Toulouse, one of the top fr French clubs. Uh, same thing, didn't want him uh, for the next season. So there's 36 players in a squad. 20 players were told they're not wanted at the end of the season. So you can imagine shockwaves through the club. People are a little bit upset, ringing their agents, going, what's going on? They actually offered me a two-year deal in the room and trying to negotiate the contract then and there, which scared me a little bit. Luckily, I managed to say, no, I'll give you an answer in two weeks' time. Thankfully for me, I stayed at Saracens. So the new people came in, uh, Edward Griffiths and, and Brenda Venter, and they wanted to change the philosophy and they had a very, very simple and clear message. They said they're not going to be results orientated, which every rugby club in my 16 year career, 11 out of the 12 rugby clubs now in the Premiership are all results orientated. Most businesses around the world are results orientated. But they said, we're not going to be re results orientated, we're going to be people focused and process driven. The coach said, there are two errors in rugby. There's a skill error and an effort error. If it's a skill error, you can't catch, you can't pass, you're not running quick enough, whatever it is, you need work on your kicking. That was the coach's problem. They would fix it and help you to get better. If it was an effort error, you'd be out of the club in, you know, quicker than you could say, whatever that expression is. But anyway, in pre-season, two people got sacked because they weren't working hard enough. Had nothing to do with their skill element, they weren't working hard enough. So you can imagine what that does as a team, certainly sharpens you up. The thing about these people that came into Saracens is actually they had a clear message, but they delivered the message. They said, we're gonna build a team. They rec recruited good people <laughs> first, and they were gonna build, build from within, build an academy, so that academy players could uh, replace the first team players. Academy coaches could re replace the first team coaches. They're gonna build a brand, play big games at Wembley, play at the HAC in the city, and actually we now have got nine partners around the world and we're going to build a stadium. We were sharing the ground with a football club, Watford Football Club. We actually found the London address, which now is our stadium. We're a hub of a community. Uh, we're the hub of, of a lot of things that happen in the community. So what the outcome of that, consistently happy and successful team. 
Unfortunately, we lost in the European final year and the Premiership final. The year before, we lost in two semi-finals, so we're making progress. We are now one of the top teams in Europe. People are asking to join the club because they know how we treat the individuals within the club. You know you have to work hard, but the rewards are you're going to have a great time. We're a dynamic, innovative uh, global brand. As I said, we've got nine partner clubs around the world. And uh, Alliance are our main sponsors. CME Group are one of our main sponsors as well. So we're actually attracting big blue trip brands. And our stadium is boutique. We're the first artificial pitch in the Premiership, actually in, in world rugby. Other clubs now following suit. And the match day experience is absolutely wonderful. That's our global brand, all the clubs that we franchise with around the world. But I don't necessarily want to take, talk about the brand. I don't want to talk about the stadium. I want to talk about the process of building a successful team. The concept, gather, gather a group of talented players, treat them unbelievably well, and in return, they will try unbelievably hard. Very, very simple concept. Obviously, rugby is a very, very tough game. You have to be incredibly fit to play. That first pre-season, and actually every training session for the last five years, they're tough. They're very, very difficult. It's a difficult environment to be in. You have to work incredibly hard to survive, that's a, that's a fact of being a fresh rugby, that's a fact of life. But on the flip side, you try hard, and you do the best you can, you get rewarded. Munich Beer Fest. We got flown to the Munich Beer Fest after beating Northampton, first thing on a Monday morning, flown back that night in a bit of a, bit of a messy state. Following weekend, we went and beat Leicester. Doesn't really matter if you can take 24 hours out of your day to drink. The whole idea is we were treated like adults. On that tour, no one, Went out, of, you know, went out of order, went off script. Okay, we got drunk, and we're, we're idiots, but we did it as a team. There was no, <laughs> there was no messing about with the public. You know, we were actually disciplined on that trip and we were treated like adults. We have core values, honesty, work rate, discipline and humility. The players, when we started this journey, sat down with the coaches and we had input. What was going to make us successful? Before I said we had our mission statement in the old Saracens, was to win games, win the Premiership. Our mission statement now is to adhere to core, strong core values. It doesn't matter if we win or lose games. As long as we continue, continually improve and demonstrate these values, then we're on the right track. What does honesty mean? Live the values, don't talk them. Be honest with yourself. Discipline, do the right thing at the right time. Promote and defend our culture. Remember, our culture is different from other Premiership cultures. Defend your culture. Be proud of what we're doing. Work great. Earn the respect by working hard. Inspire others. Inspire the young players to work hard. Be good role models for your own team. TSPDS, do the shit people don't see. In rugby, all the try scorers. Chris Ashton, wonderful. They all love Chris Ashton because he scores lots of tries. David Strettel. But actually, in our team meetings, we praise the process that went into that try. We highlight the hard work that I was a forward, that the forwards do to create those opportunities for our glory boys. Do the shit people don't see. Humility, another one. Respect everyone's contribution. No matter what people say in team meetings, no matter what their beliefs, their cultures, respect their input into the team. What it makes, it makes people feel they're part of an organization, makes them feel they're part of the Saracens family. These are our young academy players. We've got to continually learn, continually improve. It's a day out at McLaren. McLaren say they improve every eight seconds that they're at work. Imagine improving every eight seconds you're at work. That's incredible. But if you look at that group of academy players, you have Owen Farrell, you have uh, George Crew, Jackson Ray, Will Fraser. You have many people who are now in the first team squad, you know, learning all the time, building our future teams. This is our, our class of 2009. The majority of those players are in our first team squad. So that's the team, but what about the individual? What about the people that make up a team? Obviously every team is, is, uh, is an amalgamation of, of individual people. Everyone's from different backgrounds, different age, they have different problems at home. Every, it's different. So we, you can't, in a team, you can't treat everyone the same. It's just stupid if you, 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 uh, you treat everyone the same. We psychometric test all our players. We understand their learning preferences. Steve Borfitt, top right, was our captain last year. Inspirational leader, very different personality to Sculpt Brits on the bottom right. Couldn't be poles apart. 
It may not surprise you that most people in rugby are right-brained, slightly scatty, slightly entrepreneurial. Very few rugby players are analytics and uh, process-driven. So if you think in our sport, we go to the coaches, look at every nth degree, look at all the data that's out there about us, about the opposition. They've got to transform that data in team, in team meetings into messages, into storytelling, and they do it very, very successfully. So all that analytical data that they're processing, they're imparting into players by storytelling, by not giving them facts and figures, because it will just bore the player senseless. Obviously, the families are incredibly important. We've got players from all around the world coming to Saracens. We've got to look after people who are closest to the players. There's no point in just looking after the players. Got to look after the wives and girlfriends. Got to look after the mums and dads, children, etc. The Saracens Personal Development Programme was set up by Dr. David Priestley. He was a sports psychologist, but his role grew and grew and grew, and he took more and more work on. Understand every individual in the organisation, find out what they want to do post-rugby, educational courses, work experience. We have a speaker series much like this where we've had Michael Johnson in, um, famous explorers, Matthew Side, people like this. Plan for post-rugby, very important part of, uh, of being a rugby player is knowing where you're going to go in your life. Um, obviously, they're the lads uh, at business school, University of Hertfordshire Business School. Alliance, that was two years before we signed the Mozart stadium owner and shirt uh, and main shirt uh, uh, sponsor. So players did such a good job in work experience. Alliance thought, wow, this is a good club to get involved in. So it has a commercial element as well. And obviously, we do a lot of work in the community with our star players. Quickly, just to show, because I know we're short of time, just to show that it's working, we have some stats from the players. If you read those quickly, obviously, doing the personal development program makes the, makes the players feel like they're wanted, makes them feel like they're well, more well-rounded individuals and believes they're contributing to them feeling valued by the organisation as a player and not just a rugby club. In summary, this is my views, no one else's views, no one else's views at Saracens. In my 20 years of being involved in rugby, the best individuals are the ones that work the hardest. They also give extra to the team and they're usually quite well-rounded individuals. Successful teams create a family atmosphere of belonging. You want to be part of the organisation, you want to give to the team. We also set our own high standards. When a player steps out of line, he's brought back into line not by the coaches, but by the senior players. Successful organisations, in my view, and this is in a sports arena, and I'm sure it can transfer into business. People-centred, not results-driven, and continually trying to improve and make sure that your succession plan in the organisation is strong. I believe Saracens can be strong for many, many years to come. I just want to show you one quick video. This is played before the, the teams run out at every home game at Saracens, just so our audience, our fans, know exactly what being a Saracen is all about.
Thank you.